third sign of a bird-like footprint suggests that some dinosaurs are already evolved into birds. 150 million years ago, the first bird took flight and made our once a disguise wild. A mere six million years ago, the first human created the first footprints on Earth. And now, for over 60,000 years, the oldest continuous living culture on Earth, my culture, the indigenous people of Australia, have a connection to the land, the skies, and the wildlife that coexist in This connection, these stories, the knowledge, they belong to the land, they belong to the wild skies.
likes to use to stab into the wetlands and those long legs that are perfect for wading. I'm sure you've seen the Australian white ibis here today. They love to steal your lunch, but they also love to, again, wade through the waterways. They've got that long curved beak that we like to talk about. But now, let's talk about this beak. It's probably the most impressive one of our waterbird species here on the Gold Coast. This is our Australian pelican, and his name is Marlin. Now, Australian pelicans absolutely love the water. You can see these birds roosting on our sandbanks, our rock platforms, and our reefs. But, of course, they love to go swimming in our lagoons, our bays, and our estuaries. But probably the most characteristic feature of a pelican is, of course, this very impressive elongated bill and the massive throat pouch that it has. This bill can grow up to 50 centimetres in length, and it plays a very important role in a pelican's feeding. You see the lining of their bill? It's incredibly sensitive, and that allows the pelican to locate fish, even in the murkiest of water. But have a look on the upper mandible. You'll also spot that hooked area, and they can use that to grip onto slippery food items. But basically, a pelican uses their bill like a net. They can plunge their bill down into the water, show us how it's done, Marlin. They'll grab a big mouthful of water and fish, and then they can then empty out that water and maneuver that fish into a swallowing position. And when it is fully extended, a pelican's bill can actually hold up to 15 litres of water. But you know, because of this, pelicans unfortunately become susceptible to our fishing equipment, our fishing tackle. They can get tangled up in this. So it's really important to remember that it takes one negative action to cause harm to a pelican and only one positive action to prevent it. Sorry in the front row, you didn't flush zone there. Why wouldn't you want to protect birds like that? Thank you, Marla. See you later, buddy. bird species that have learned to adapt really well to the changes that we have made to their environment. And our next guest is a bird that can get up to 70% of its diet from following commercial fishing trawlers. A highly adaptable species is this cute little guy here. This is our crested tern and his name is Mopsa. It's not really a monster at all though, is he? He's actually probably the cutest bird we've got in our bird show. And a bird that you can find on almost every stretch of the Australian coastline. What they like to do is dive for food. They can dive from up to 10 metres above the water and they can dive to death with sometimes a metre below the surface. They will do this when they're looking for their favourite food, things like anchovies and sardines. They've even been seen up to 10 kilometres out to sea during the breeding season looking for these beautiful fish. But crested terns have also been found in the centre of our country as well. Now, how does a crested tern get into arid interiors of Australia, you might wonder? Well, they're pretty little and they're pretty light. So it's said that they're often blown there by some of our inclement weather, like a passing tropical cyclone. Oh no, monster, do you hear the thunder? I can hear the thunder. And the mist is coming, buddy. I don't want you to get blown inland, even though he's a water bird and he doesn't like to get wet. So we better get you out of here and just in case it starts raining, I'll protect you. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, everyone, that's our crested tern. Probably least likely to see, since they are found inland, is if 
red tile black coffee cream, which is the same, same. Sharp tasting that stunning tile coloration. Similar in size to our beautiful yellow tile, however, of course, have those distinctive red tile feathers. They do also have a close relative that can be spotted in the northern New South Wales region, our glossy black coffee cream. However, they are unfortunately facing a rapid decline in our environment. And these beautiful girls that we have here in studies, they are in fact ambassadors for their species. So what we would like to do is offer one last test to chance to get this a little bit closer. So sir, the second row in the blue jumper, that's the zip of the yes, that's the yes. air. Can you stand up where you are for me, sir? Stand up right where you're off, on that to the side, nice and straight, like a tree. There we go, because you're going to have a wonderful encounter with licorice. Ah, beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. You can take a seat. Thank you. You see, these beautiful birds we have here, they are, as I mentioned, ambassadors for their species. There are 2,100 species of cockatoos in the world, and our black cockatoos here in Australia make up the six of them. Of those six, half are already in danger, as they are facing rapid decline out the wild due to habitat destruction. But we are proud to stand here today here at Front Wildlife Sanctuary and say that we are part of a very important breeding program. Just one positive step towards a bright future for you to serve our farm and feed it to the What do you reckon? You think now, Sunny? Yeah. You might notice that you did something lovely here this afternoon, but she is effortlessly rotating that head of her. That is because they have got double the amount of vertebrae in their neck as a giraffe. So this actually allows them to rotate that head 270 degrees. So they will sit high in the canopy using that effortless movement to locate their prey. And when they pinpoint them, then they use what is known as silent flight to ambush their victims. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and it's Kaylee and Bailey is a barking now. <laughs> in the bushes behind the rubbish bin, or perhaps a flat of colour in the tree home. Whether you know it or not, you're back out of feeding and housing the variety of animals that bring the night to life. But of course, of all the unique animals that emerge at night, you create such a magical ambience quite like an owl. In addition to sculpture, Owls are seen as a totem for women and universally symbolise the powers of mystery, night and wisdom. And I'm sure we can all agree there is something wonderfully alluring about our owl species. We are so very lucky here in our country because we have 11 different species of owls. Now they cover every single state and territory. And one in particular, is known to be a formidable hunter of the night, the barking owl. This here is Bailey. Now believe it or not, the localization of this small face is a small face owl, that's the picture that of a dog barking. I like it, And what's very interesting about that call is that companions can hear that vocalization and respond from up to six kilometers away. Got it. And if they are at such a distance, they do not hear that call, that is when they utilize that impeccable eyesight, not just to point the location of their companions, but also the location of their prey. Now barking out, they love to feast on things like rats and mice, small roosting birds, Sugar gliders, sugar gliders. <laughs> <laughs> but some of it's quite fascinating to sit with their environment. And it's really only today that we are beginning to appreciate and also recognise the richness and the importance of these cultural crews. I want you to think about something. As humans, we make over 35,000 decisions every single day, but to make a positive impact. To make a positive impact, all you need to do is to change one. Thanks, Jack. We can all make on one change, one choice. The power to change the world starts with one, so let's keep our skies forever quiet. Of course, you've seen Nick there. 